uh, the strange intro today, but we had a little technical difficulties on our side. We apologize for that. Welcome to Golf Talk Radio's Mike and Billy, another edition. It is uh, the week before Thanksgiving. It's our thankful show. Um, I've been studying a whole lot of records over here. My name is Mr. Billy Gibbs. That guy's Mr. Mike Brabinick. Hi, good, Mike. Good morning. <laughs> and in, in the headphones, as always, is Hop. Hi, Hop. Apologies. Not sure what happened on this end. Not a problem. Well, that was that was really that was strange. It but was, it's okay. That was weird, and then it like it popped, and you were there. Well, it was kind of nice because Mike and I had a chance to catch up. We haven't seen each other in a while. So, did you record that in the Hall of Records? What just I, happened? I, I'm I'm taking notes as we speak. Okay. I've got so many records over here. Good. But we got a good show today. We are Mike's talking about records because we were up all night discussing what should we talk about. But and I said how thankful we are. It's Thanksgiving and it's coming up, and we should be thankful. And and Mike says he's got nothing. So I said, you know what? <laughs> We should share what people there was because he he mentioned some some amazing records. Some guy <laughs> that went to tour qualifying school. I thought that was fascinating. So we said, why don't we talk about records? Because I'm sure everybody who holds one is thankful. I've held a record right? before. Was it? Uh, I have about was three, it an LP. Three hundred of them. It was an home. LP. You, yeah, I have I many. Was, I got EP of, LPs. Got rid of mine. Any forty fives? You got rid of them? Yeah, that's you know I didn't know I, I, I didn't know they're coming back. I have a couple specialty 45s. I know where they are, though. So if my brother-in-law's got them in a box, I might have to grab them back again. I think you better go get them. <laughs> so, but anyway, so, for, so and our, our listeners have been very thankful for this history segment we've been sharing lately. So we're going to bring it back, and I'll talk about that in just a few minutes. But uh, I just wanted to uh, get, get get a little BM going here. So how are you doing, man? I, I worry about you. I see you. Um, <laughs> usually you have this bounce to your step, kind of not a bounce today. And you usually have this smile. But So are you okay? Everything yeah. good? No, I, no. I, I, everything's, everything's fine. All right, man. Because you know I worry about you. Yeah. No, I think, I think everything's good. Um, just trying to think of what's going on. Well, it must be a lot. You can see that there's, there's, there's a lot. So there's a lot. Yeah. So I just, I'm here for you if you need me. You know that, right? Reach out anytime you want. I'm there for you. Do you want me to spill? You got a lot going on. Wow. Well, I knew it was I'm something. Not, I'm not going to. There's, it's not serious stuff. Well, spill. It's, it's, well, my sister has cancer. Oh, don't spill that. I'm sorry. And they pulled a golf ball sized tumor out of her leg. And it's a kind of cancer that they have, they usually don't see in, in that age grouping. She's only in her mid forties. It's usually cancer that they see and it's very rare and they usually find it in someone who's over 60. And so now they're trying to determine they've got 12 specialists and they cannot figure out what it is, where it is, or if they got it all or not. Well, I'm, so, I'm praying that they got it all. And, and yeah, actually, sorry, I pride. I, you know, I didn't want you to have to spill that. No, it's okay. <laughs> we so could, it's, we could have talked that off yeah. air, but I, my prayers, the thoughts are with yeah. you. It's the sister. second but, time she's had cancer. Yeah, and man. She had cancer in that same leg, which makes it very strange. It's in like a sweat gland and a lymph node in a sweat gland. Well, maybe they got it all. Yeah. So right. then, you know, they the just... thing, the thing that was fascinating to me and being thankful. So this all ties all in right. now that I'm talking about nice. it. Nice. She just said to me, I had a conversation where she said, I don't want to do any chemo. I don't want to do any radiation. I just want to feel normal for six months, you know? And so, cause she's gone through a lot. So it's, it's one of those things where you start realizing that, you know, get all whatever philosophical here, but it's one of those things that you start realizing how every day is no matter how good, bad or indifferent you think it is. It's just a, it's a great day, no matter what having another day here. So, you know, I love my sister to death, obviously as does the rest of my family and I wish her the best. And, uh, I didn't know she's going to get through it, but it's just one of those things that kind of hits you out of left field, like wham, there you go. And it's like, Oh yeah, there is a reality and there is life and stuff happens. You know, not everything's going to be roses. Yeah. So she's good. Okay. She's getting through it. Well, and then, yeah. you so, know, other than that, every, everything else is, everything else is pretty cool. My son has almost had his heart broken here by his girlfriend and he wrote one of the most amazing songs and made a song. It was, it's pretty amazing. So, you know, it's just interesting how these, they're just life things. Yeah. It's nothing well, you major, can, major. I can sense things, you know me, because I've known yeah. me forever, and so I'm, I, I didn't mean to pry too personally. I just, to, you know, I got to you say, well, the tea sheet's a little crooked, or you know, I had, I have <laughs> a lesson that went bad, and I didn't, you know, so I am really sorry to hear about your sister. I, I am hoping everything is awesome. I do see how you tied golf into that, which is kind of tough to do, and it's a, such a serious thing. But you brought the golf ball size tumor that you brought up, so um, so you tied it. 
man. So well, and I'm thankful. You know, I'm thankful that they so. that they found it and they got it yeah. out, and she made it through the surgery, and everything's good. But it's it's uh, yeah, it's just one of those things. Like when you when you ask, you know, are you thankful for anything? That's why I said I'm thankful for I'm thankful for just getting up, thankful for every day, yeah. thankful for being here with you, and um. Yeah, it's just one of those life check moments. You know, we all have them. Absolutely. So every, everything, you know, everything else is everything else is is good. Glad to hear it, my yeah. friend. Really glad to hear it. So um, I am going to. I don't even know how to follow that. So I um, because I was going to be uh, you know something very kind of th- I thought was pretty funny and pertinent to the moment. Well, so, do it. I want to. I want to hear funny. I want to. I want to hear it. I have to get the mojo back. Come on, man. Lost the mojo right no. now. No. Pop, how are you doing? You good? Are you there, I'm Hop? sorry, I wasn't paying attention. What? <laughs> I want to hear the. No, I want to hear the kidding, funny. I want to hear course. the funny thing. <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I had a few things here. I've actually, um, um, and I'll, I'll just skip a couple, but I'll jump to um, uh, our our season's coming to an end with the first tee. And if you guys who know me know that I'm I'm the program director and I'm heavily involved with the first tee of Central Coast, and uh, it's my 15th year doing this, and our season is coming to an end. And so I'm in crunching numbers and getting ready for our strategic plan meeting and our final board meeting and that stuff. But um, the cool news is that, you know, I, my last class is is tomorrow and then everybody else is finished up except for Mike's kind of has a, a post-fall session in the middle of it. Specialty but class. We had over 1,500 young people that have been to our 14 program sites over this year. Um, a bunch of them from Paso Golf Clubs. So speaking of thankful, Mike, you're one of the best coaches Oh, that we have. You had 230, actually, you had 211 kids at your program this year. All at one time in an hour. Yeah, all on Sunday morning. Yeah. 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 So within one hour. They were like lined up around the they golf. Just, <laughs> I just wasn't, but, I was not prepared for that. But you had the most of all. We had 189 um, at one of our other sites, um, but you had 211. Your goal for next year is 230. Um, I, as program director, contact a lot of parents periodically and just ask for testimonials or comments or or a little survey, what we could do better and everything. And everybody loves you up there, and, and as do I in the first T chapter. But you're doing a great job, man. And uh, But 1,509 well, participants wow. um, through our 14 sites. And tomorrow's my last day. I'm combining two classes, um, then having a little celebration for the end of year and playing parents versus kids and, and nice. girls, girls versus boys. And we're just going to have a lot of surprises coming in. But I just wanted to say awesome year for the first tee and i'm grateful and thankful that i'm involved with that i'm off to uh, monday i'm going to scottsdale arizona for some r and r for a few days coming back on thanksgiving night um nice. so that's i just can't get i can't get away you know it's cool i live in the ocean and i go to the desert and those two extremes really intrigue me they're both mm. beautiful i mean they're in their own way they're magical yeah. and i don't have a preference but I love them both. So one's yeah. very wet and one's arid. I've learned that. Yeah. yeah. Did I, you know that? There's definitely a difference in the way they look, Mike. Thank you for that. And I'm glad you noticed. <laughs> I just thought, just trying to help. So I appreciate that input. And you know, it, you know, I think about it. There is a little difference there, but it's just kind of neat that it. And I love them both. And so I'm just, we're just going to go explore my wife and I. And but I did have something. You know, I don't talk political. Uh, I try not to. It, it's not. This is not the forum for that. And even on my Facebook page, I don't get political because I, I respect my position working with young people and yeah. don't need to. And I know lots of young people and parents are on Facebook as well. Right. So I don't try to do that. But I, I had a this word quid pro quo is coming up a lot. Oh, my gosh. That, that, that's so, everywhere. Everywhere. If you hear it all the time, if you guys follow news, you hear it. So I actually found. Is that I, something you can say when you give somebody a putt? It's hard to say three times. Like if you and I were putting and you had a putt that was if three feet. If you said, I'll give you that if you give me mine. Yeah. So if you're like three me, feet away and good, I'm four good, feet away. Good, good is a, is a quid pro quo. Oh, so I'm going to start saying that. Yes. Yeah, so say it three times. Fast. Instead of good, good. On the course, I, quid I rehearsed pro quid pro quo all the way up here today so I could say it without stumbling wow. through it. But I want to tell you, I actually came across one, a okay. real one in my personal life. Okay. I hate to admit this, but I was at McDonald's. Yes. Don't go there very often, but I was at McDonald's. Quick lunch, my wife and I. So they print out the receipt. Yes. And I, and the, and I look down the receipt, and there is a blatant quid pro quo right here in the receipt. And now here's what it says. If you guys have been to McDonald's lately, check your receipt. Says, rate us highly satisfied and receive one free egg McMuffin. Not rate us, but if you rate them highly satisfied, <laughs> you get an egg McMuffin. So you this doesn't you could have the worst experience ever, but if you rate them highly satisfied, if you're starving, yeah, right, man, I'm dying. You know, we gotta eat. I could go in there and hit a highly satisfied, get a certificate, get a little number to get a free egg McMuffin. This is a quid pro quo, people. 
Wow. They can't. And look, it says it right at the first thing. So the top of your receipt says 260? That's my number. That's that's not how many times you've been there? That, yeah, that's how, in, in the last month. No, no that's, that, that's number 260. I'm just asking. We're talking numbers <laughs> that, and records. That's when they call out 260 over here. 260. Yeah. So, but uh, it's, do, you, do you think that's fair? Get, well, it's definitely having an influence. It's 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 asking for a favor, right? For something, not just you know. If they say take the survey, we'll give you a free free hamburger. Right. That's not an issue, man. You take it. But Wade is highly satisfied. Right. So I've got. I'm bringing this up to the McDonald's court. I'm going in. I'm take, Are you going to take the McDonald's man, this court? This is wrong. This is a quid pro quo. Wow. This is favor. This is a bribe. Although you don't have to take the bribe, right? You don't have to do this. No. But it's still asking a favor for one. How often do you? What do you think, Hop? What How do you often think? do you fill out those surveys? I mean, never have never had. No, one. I, haven't I just re- have to. So, what do you think, Hobbs? Is that a quid pro quo? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, they say rate us highly. Said they're telling us what to how high to rate them, not just rate us. If you rate them poorly satisfied, but, would you get you get small fry? In other words, you get what? If you tell the they, truth, you get nothing. You, yeah, they, you keep, you're missing part of your order. <laughs> People just poorly come in and you're missing your fries. Hey, where's the fries, man? So, anyways, I just thought that was fascinating. Well, like the caddy I know that you probably don't, you guys listen, don't think it's as big a deal as I do, but when you hear quid pro quo a billion times in the news every single yeah. day, and what's more funny is watching all the announcers <laughs> stumble through those three words. My wife taught me how to say it without messing say it. It's quid pro quo three times. So, I hear you. Quid pro quo. You got it. Quid pro quo. How about you, Hop? You got quid it? Quid pro quo. Quid pro quo. See? Pro <laughs> quo. Pro quo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. So, um, John, you know John Oliver's show? Have you ever seen it? You get HBO? <laughs> Uh, no, I don't have right. HBO, but he, I've heard of John Oliver. But he, yeah. um, did a whole segment of all the announcers for the last few months that are trying to say those three words that are stumbling. It yeah. A bunch of sound bites. Oh, it was hilarious. But anyways, McDonald's coming at you. I am going to go Mick big on them. <laughs> I'm going Mick big. So again, <laughs> I I love just, it. I'd like to, uh, make it on record that I do not visit McDonald's very often. Um, rarely these days, but, uh, was time crunched and little needed a little something. So, and you wanted to see Ronald McDonald. If you could guess what I ordered, can I ask you what time of the see, day it was? Yeah, you can. I think it was like I want to say one one o'clock. It was it was lunch time. Your chicken sandwich, not bad. I was just gonna say that. So I'm gonna change. Uh, you got a you got a nine piece chicken McNugget. <laughs> no, no. I, I oh, so we've never been to McDonald's. Obviously, yeah. we never. I've never. I we always, have once. We have. We were heading down uh, to the desert, ironically, that you were talking about the desert, and we stopped there and got an Egg McMuffin. I think it's the only Egg McMuffin I've ever had in my life. And what did you think, man? Are you okay? I liked it. Yeah. It was good. I would have gotten that if it was morning. Yeah. You know, although they served. Right. I got a filet of fish. I always do. Really? Excellent choice. Never seen a square fish swim, but I'm telling you, <laughs> I, I always, always it's since I was a kid. One of my all-time favorite sandwiches. I know. Oh the my first God. two bites, if they're hot, the first two bites are like magic. Those are the best. When man. I was a kid, my mom would take us to McDonald's. I would get the Big Mac, and I would get the uh, uh, side of chicken McNuggets and order fries. So I was, and I was like, that was heaven. I'd get it on the TV tray, <laughs> it was get heaven. in front of the TV, and yeah. I'd watch, believe it or not, I'd watch NHL hockey. Filet of fish. I'm not, trying, I'm not trying to be blasphemous or disrespectful, but Lent to me for the, like, the last 20 years has always meant filet of fish sandwiches are on special and because they always put them on special during Lent. Yeah. Wow, and and they used, and that. Fridays often they used to do that on Fridays as well. But I if, I used to Mike when I was a kid, fillet of fish, fries, and a chocolate shake. <laughs> that's to that's me good eating, babe. was the yeah. That's oh why I am who I am today. <laughs> Thank you very much. But Uh-oh. so um, anyways, I thought that's, it was hilarious. That's cool, man. I, I like and that. I, it really is a quid pro quo here. This is not. This is a favor for a favor. I'm gonna, I agree. I'm going I, Mick all I, over this. I agree with you. I'm going hundred percent. Mike right. Rabinac, you're not a fast food guy, are you? He's not. You know what? I'm not because when I was even when I was a kid, when I say kid in high school, and we could leave campus and go to lunch, I used to I would eat that stuff, and then I go back to school, and I just felt totally sick. Yeah, which explains my dietary restrictions and all that other stuff. But I used to we used to go off campus. I had my bag lunch. How about In and Out burgers? Uh, in and Out burgers Love I can do, burger. but I yeah, do them without the bun. Protein yeah, style we've been animal in style. Burger and I've seen that done. I just don't. I just that. don't eat the bread. Yeah. Do you have a? Do you have a kind of like a delicate tum tum? Uh, yeah. I, I wouldn't say I'm celiac, but I I stay away from gluten as much as possible. It just just makes me really sleepy, and I get big balls of phlegm. Yum. 
cheat. <laughs> and it turns back once again. Yeah. But but anyways, we come back in. We've got uh, we got we you know I know we want to share some golf records. I I, th- I was thinking what could be thankful. What are we all thankful for? And um I, I and then Mike, you mentioned that record. Yeah. And I thought you know it might be cool to. Because every these, some of these records are insane. I have some I have Guinness go, records of golf, and I've got some professional records of golf. You got some amateur records right. of golf. Plus, we have the history segment that everybody's calling for, and I want to lead into that. So. Okay, so we are being uh, preempted in the second hour. Everybody so in let's Bakersfield. Do the history, then. Um, so you'll be able to get the second hour on our podcast at GolfTalkRadio.com later on tonight. Let's come back with history. Okay. So we'll be right back. Golf Talk Radio with Mike and Billy, brought to you by McPhee's Grill of Templeton. Hometown cooking through and through. Check them out at McFeesGrill.com today. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Black Friday. 